presented by Taproom. 74 Wyndham Street, the ultimate sporting hub. www.drinkfromthetap.co.nz F-F-N. You crazy for this one, Rick? The Tap Room presents Sprawl and Brawl, the ultimate combat podcast. 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 With Dan, JB, and Eddie Redscope. All right, Sprawl and Brawl, welcome in Sunday action. Actually, there's nothing on today. You know what we're doing? We're breaking shit down. My name's Dan. How you doing? Rhonda, I'm still waiting. JB, the ultimate <laughs> writer. Hey, yo, what's up? How you going, man? Tell us where we can find you. Well, you can find me mainly on Twitter, uh, also on Facebook, but at the ultimate writer, U-L-T-I-M-8 writer, or just Google the ultimate writer. I'm pretty much the only thing that comes up. You need to get a better PR guy, because <laughs> I tell you what, let's, hey, can we get a less awkward handle for Twitter? Well, this PR guy gets uh, gets paid the right amount, so. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> We've got no Etsy Red Scarf today, but the Red Scarf is off serenade his lady on her birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Bow, happy bow. birthday. Bow, bow, bow. But joining us, <laughs> as always, the white guy. What's up? Nate. I also just noticed you just asked yourself how you were. You said, I'm Dan. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> I think he was talking to the audience. No, no, I'm pretty sure he was talking to himself. <laughs> I was talking to myself. Yeah. You're right. I'm good, by the way. Just so you get, just for anyone who wants I found to know. That a little uncomfortable. I find you uncomfortable well, generally. I mean, that's how I am. I spoke to your parents. They told me you're a very uncomfortable person. I am. Yeah, they know that. They you're the only guy to create an awkward situation in a five-year-old's birthday party. They said. Well, yeah. <laughs> Didn't help that you were 19 uh, at that, the time. That court case is ongoing, Dan. Yeah, I like if you're not talking about that on yeah. You will get your name off that registered sex offenders list. I'm sure at some point. Hey, Seven man. Years. Hey, it's been a bit of an exciting week. I'm not going to lie to you. I, great. I, 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 yeah, man. UFC 184, I think, exceeded anybody's expectations. Yep. yep. Particularly, I'm going to turn the music down because let's get in this discussion straight away. Ooh, Ronda yeah. Rousey, 14 seconds, Kat Zingano. Break it down. Jean Barry. Well, um, you know, huge, obviously, so much hype behind this fight. Rousey versus Ngano. Kat Zingano has been through the trials and, you know, done a lot of work to get back to where she was. Number one contender in, in the race for the title. And, um, yeah, came out, ding, ding, uh, let's go. And 14 seconds later, there was another ding, ding, and it yep. was done. So, um, yeah, uh, Kat Zingano looks like, you know, she just let her emotions get the better of her and um, yeah, she tried to flying knee Ronda Rousey straight off the bat and you don't run at a judo no. Olympic medalist. That's it. It's judo is all choice. about using your momentum and your weight against you. It's, yeah, and it's exactly what she did. Yeah. Five seconds later, it was over. Is it bad that I was slightly turned on watching Ronda? I think, so I think we natural. all were, Dan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was. We think it's pretty natural. <laughs> yeah. Um, and what was really, really great about it was that uh, for the first seven seconds of that <laughs> Ronda was on the back foot yeah but she just so absolutely yeah, yeah man so Cat runs at her goes for a high knee yeah misses the high knee then gets gets uh, immediately and yeah and get, take, puts a good hold on takes Ronda down so she affects the takedown on yeah. Ronda then Ronda just rolls over takes the back transitions yeah. all, bar, <laughs> all over as you said that first like four and a half seconds oh she was waiting like, up until then everyone went <laughs> <Yeah>. we were <laughs> down here at the tap room watching and everyone went oh shit because it was like Ronda was up vertical and everyone was like yeah. fuck she's got her in that position that Kat Zangano's had people before Yeah. and you were like fuck it's going to be over Razi's going to get choked out in 15 seconds and, and then, then she just went flip she was on the back yeah. and then she's an athlete um, all right, yeah. man. it was just ridiculous it just showed how class her judo skills her and how good her, is, her is, ground game is yeah. it was just unbelievable yeah. there is no one in the women's division right now that can compete no with one. Ronda yeah. Rousey not even come close and closest Ronda that came was Misha Tate someone that she'd already vanquished in yeah. a different federation does Misha Tate get another shot not for me, not unless she puts like a huge run together and looks absolutely convincing. Cause she looked, I mean, Misha didn't look convincing in the first couple of rounds of her last fight, but no, she did right. look all right, sort of, and in, 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 in winning the last, few ra- in the last yeah. round or whatever. Do you yeah. think Kat should get another shot? Why? I mean, because... Yeah. Rubber <laughs> matches don't really do it for me unless they're yeah. razor thin. Yeah, man. Oh, um, I would like to see it again because at the, uh, on paper the matchup was good. It just she came out yeah. and did a stupid thing and got she, you know she had a it. chance. But that's, that's that's the opportunity you get though. Yeah, you know? yeah. No, I mean, that's fair enough. Yeah, no, I mean, no, I'm, I'm not saying she should get one. I'm just saying, like, would you like? She's to like, one? she's like, fuck, fuck. That's all yeah. all yeah. her interview was was just start again. Yeah. Well, guess what? You don't necessarily get to start again nah. because you know what happened. You had a ro- you had the wrong game plan. You should have. Now here's the thing. 
Her team should have known that you don't run out of Ronda Rousey. You brought no. up a very good point yeah. about 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 her judo, judo ability yeah. and her background in judo. Yeah. But let's not also forget the other the other fighters that have run that that have rushed, tried to rush Ronda yeah. Rousey. It doesn't work. No. You have to be methodical. You have to have a decent stay on game the plan. Outside, use your striking if possible. Like, yep. Yeah, Ronda's you know, someone you just want to stay away from in general. Like you yeah. don't want to be on the ground with her. You don't want to be grappling with her because she's going to beat you at that. You want to just try and knock her out. I don't even think you want to stand with her at the moment. No, I don't no, think there's anyone right, that can yeah. stand with her. <laughs> it's she like, can. what do you do? Then? I mean, we're going to talk about Holly Holm in a, in a little bit, but Holly, yeah. I, don't even, I, I think Holly Holm would struggle. And Ronda has said Definitely. that she would love to stand with Holly Holm. Yeah. Well, based yeah. on what we've seen from her in the UFC, uh, yeah, once she stepped up to the UFC caliber competition, Rocky Pennington, um, it really exposed some holes in her game. Like, you know, she looks like she's willing to take shots to give shots, which is, in boxing, is, you know, okay, is, yeah. is definitely reputable. But in MMA with those tiny gloves, it's not so I wouldn't be not. doing it. No, Ho- Holly, because there was a lot of hype around her and I was really excited to watch like a legit like seven or eight time world champion or yep, whatever she was right. box and I was I was a little disappointed in it. It was like it was it was a it was a pretty good fight to watch, but her her punching didn't seem that impressive from yeah. from a UFC point of view. She's a points fighter, yeah, but I, I'll tell you, yeah, she she's a points fighter. Yeah. Part of the problem that you've also got there is because. In boxing, the gloves are that much bigger. It That's gives right. you that so much extra amount of of yep. of of of, of, of um, uh, protection. Well, no, no, I'm talking more about the the, the distance and the reach and oh, things, right. you know, yeah, yeah. and that sort of thing. And she struggled to find her range a little bit with Definitely. Rocky. And and the thing is, a UFC fighter moves a lot differently to a, um, to, a boxer, to a boxer. And also, yeah. you're thinking about different things as well. Yeah. You're not just thinking about okay, if I if I go with a straight right here and then I'm gonna go to the body a couple of times. Yeah. What your thing is, I'm gonna go for a straight right here, go a couple of bodies, but I gotta watch for that knee that's coming, yeah, or exactly. I gotta watch for the takedown and things yeah. like that. That's so right. her movement was always gonna be inhibited because of the other things that she's got going on in yeah, her mind. That, it wasn't a second nature thing. Yeah, no, yeah, pretty much. much. She seemed yeah, a little not uncomfortable. Habi- she's not habitual yet in yeah. MMA. You know, and so I think if you get, I mean, how do you rate how do you rate uh, uh, Ronda's stand up? Uh, Ronda stand up relatively untested. Um, you know, yeah. against a very high level striker. But from all the footage you see, and from what we've seen in her previous fights, she she is now becoming a legitimate striker. And she, look, she looks like she's got a bit of power as well. Like yeah, te- well, technique and stuff. She's we haven't definitely seen got a lot those of, quick twitch fibers, and yeah. you know, she's she's got an athletic pedigree. She's been doing this her whole life, as she she says. And so. she's got, she's got a pretty big uh, like upper body shoulder kind of. Yeah, yeah, like well she's, she, she's pretty she, well built she for definitely like a punch. is um yeah like bulky uh, for a woman yeah definitely. so it was the first time that there have been two women uh, main event or main event yeah, and co-main event uh, yeah. Holly Holm Rocky Pennington I thought it was a good fight for Holly Holm they have to take on a, 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 an athlete of Rocky's sort of background yep. and in her first fight as well first UFC fight yeah, right. yeah I think I think rather than them giving her just a, a just an absolute a, um, a gimme a gimme I, I I thought it was a good matchup for for Holly Holm yeah. yeah that's right you know Rocky Pennington is a legitimate um, contender no, not maybe not top five now but definitely in the top ten of the UFC and um, you know, she's the perfect welcome and also like a measuring stick for someone like Holly Holm. So there's this meme going around. Is it the meme with Josh Koscheck? <laughs> yes. It, oh. It's been circulating, <laughs> circulating around. The foam in the mouth. Yeah. Which was kind of a little bit disturbing to see, really. Like, it was, <laughs> it was pretty rough. He was like... It looked like oh, it this is dying. a really bad idea. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I've made a huge mistake. I've made, yeah. I think I've made a huge yeah. mistake. There's a couple <laughs> of different ones. And, and yeah. there's also a Brazzers version as well, which I thought was particularly <laughs> funny. <laughs> Brazzers? I haven't seen the Brazzers version. It's got like the Brazzers can we post logo. it on our Facebook page? Yeah, we can. What is our Facebook page, by the way? Uh, there? So it's uh, Sprawl in Brawl in Z. Uh, Sprawl in Brawl You in don't Z. make things easy, do I you? Don't, man, I like to be unique. You like to be yeah. unique. <laughs> but we don't want anyone to find us. <laughs> don't find but us you, on you the internet. You can definitely find us through the tap room. Uh, don't want know. to find us at the tap room. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the dark room out the back. How do you feel about Jake Allenberg getting paid more than Ronda Rousey? Well, he's, you know, kind of good. Uh, for him, it was would have been the second contract negotiation that got him to this point, not his first. So Rousey's still on her first contract negotiation with the UFC. They would have tied her down to like 10, 10 fights at sixty, yeah. whatever it is. It makes no sense that wh- why is she the main event now? If she's not getting paid the most, well, she gets paid. Surely. Why wasn't her win yeah. bonus more? Because her yeah. win bonus, he, and this is the point here. So she got paid one hundred thirty thousand for the fight. Jake yeah. Allenberger got paid one hundred thirty six thousand. Yeah. Yet the win bonus, he got sixty eight. She got sixty five for her win bonus. Yeah. Now that's something that they can adjust. Yes. So yeah. wh- why are they not paid him more? 
Well, just <laughs> contracts. You know, the UFC don't want to like they don't owe her more than her contract stipulates. Yeah, so yeah, they can they can not do it if they don't want yeah. to. Yeah, and pay per view points. That was actually the biggest pay per view in recent memory for the UFC. So you know, if uh, her pay per view points, if Anderson Silva making about two million US from his last pay per view is anything to go by, she made millions I off this. I think Rousey's really caught the general public's attention because she's a badass chick who's yeah. like the There's Sports been, Illustrated thing helps as well, like getting more yes. eyes on her. Yeah. And definitely, you know, it makes her more relatable as well. Yeah. Um, you know, seeing her in in a, like a Sports Illustrated thing makes bring make I don't know makes her a bit more human. Yeah. Also important to note out as uh, important to note that in regards to payment, Ronda Rousey, Jake Allenberg all got f- both also got fifty thousand um, dollars. That's right. Uh, performance, performance of the, of the night, night. Yep. as Huge. well. So yeah, man, they deserved it. Like you know, um, th- man, Allenberg was dominating Josh Koscheck. Yep. That guy honestly needs to go on Joe Rogan's podcast and hang it up. Boring fight though. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, neither, you know, neither of them looked like they were going to finish it until it happened. Yeah, I mean, for, for, uh, I, I, that was the one fight that I wasn't excited for. Anyway, your man, your friend, my man, your friend, Alan Joban, Alan Joban, your <laughs> friend on tw- my friend, on he's my Twitter. friend on Twitter, <laughs> and Richie Walsh. Yep, Richie Walsh, man. He he he, uh, he you know he looked fine. Uh, Alan Joban, though, his striking just came through, and he he looked excellent and um, finished Richie against the cage. There looked great. Um, you picked Richie, though, didn't you? I did pick Richie. You know, I'm, I'm loyal to our Aussie Bros when they're fighting some um, fighting against uh, someone from the states or something like that. And um, yeah, what does a guy like Richie need to do to to, to get back on track? Yeah, well, Alan Joban um, is a better striker than Richie. Um, I think we saw from that. Um, you know, he's just got to go back camp it out and um yeah just uh, i don't i don't really know what he has to work on other than just his striking getting a bit more fluid um but you know i rate richie richie walsh he's a he's a good fighter in the battle between the two bjj specialists on the card there we had tony ferguson up against my man gleason thebel however tony ferguson submission rear naked choke break it down for us well, Tony Ferguson, ultimate fighter winner himself. Um, he's he's been going from strength to strength. He's on a bit of a streak, and yeah, he man, he made Gleason Tebow look look um, just uh, un- overwhelmed in this fight. Um, so yeah, Tony, it's kind of like where to from here for Tony Ferguson. The thing I like about Tony Ferguson is he's 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 only a brown belt. Yeah. But he but he he looks so comfortable r- r- rolling around. Yeah, man, he looks excellent. Hey, he um he he is just high level. Like the guy, he he's shown a lot of class in all of his outings in the UFC so well he's off what he's on what he's on a 5-0 and I think at the moment yep. uh, sorry 5-1 five, five, one, a 5 win streak there yep. since he's lost to, to Michael Johnson um, but I'm, I'm just looking at his record here so he's lost one fight in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 UFC appearances pretty impressive that's a very impressive record particularly <laughs> you know for somebody who's fighting um in, in, a, in, a, in a pretty decent lightweight division, I think it's yeah. fair to say. And, you know, look at the caliber he's fought. Like Mike Rio, another um, tough competitor himself. You know, Michael Johnson. Danny Castillo. Winner. Yeah, that's right. Eves Edwards, when he was quite a bit younger, you know, four years ago, when Eves Edwards was more competitive. Um, so, you know, it definitely has has what it takes. It's just um, he's got to put the right run together. So it was a, it was a good card. I mean, we were a little bit um, dubious about the, the, the lineup heading into it. Yeah. Um, but I think it was pretty entertaining. I enjoyed both women's fights. Um, yeah, me Even too. the 14 seat. I was, I, I was excited. I was standing on my stool. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Ronda Rousey finish, for me, is, was probably the greatest finish I've seen in UFC. Like, regardless, like, like for yeah. me... That that an MMA that rates up there with Rampage Jackson power bombing power bomb yeah, yeah. yeah. the power Rampage season. Jackson yep that's exa- back in pride yeah this this was phenomenal for me because it showed after all that build up and all of Katzengano's emotion and the story around her and everyone's getting behind her because of the story yeah she got smashed she just Didn't got mean, she, she yeah. just got destroyed and <laughs> yeah. people go well she and here's the thing you go oh well she rushed her yep. you know that was her that was her mistake yep. after she rushes her with a high knee she affects the takedown on Ronda yep. she she had an initial advantage should have just created space maybe an elbow off the breakup and then just gone that's back all to, she needed to do that's right yep. in, instead of taking Ronda down Ronda w- pretty simple yep. roll straight over onto the back yep. transitions takes the arm so and it was all over well, 14 that seconds memory that Ronda has and if you've ever seen some workout footage of Ronda her core strength looks like some yeah. of the greatest core strength yeah. ever she can she can lie on her back um, cradle her arms and legs and move herself around just with her shoulder blades in her butt. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So that was UFC 184. We don't have to wait very long at all for UFC 185 next Sunday. That's right. Going to be screening live from the tap room. Huge. Huge one. Peters versus Dos Angeles. Yep. 
Who are you picking in that one? It's got to be Showtime. Yeah, really, it has to be Showtime. You know, um, Anthony Pettis is, uh, apart from his first fight in the UFC where he lost to Clay Guida, he has shown nothing but dominance. Um, you know, the guy's a legitimate striker, and um, yeah, I, I can't wait to see it. Women's strawweight title is then up for grabs in what is the co main event. Carla Esparza versus Joanna, I can never pronounce her last name. Uh, <laughs> Jed Rachek. Jed Rachek. Yeah, she's a um, legitimate, sorry, legitimate striker out of Poland. Uh, Carla Esparza obviously won Tough 20, yep. uh, the strawweight title. She won against Rose uh, Namajunas. Um, and yeah, this is going to be a huge match. The Pollock is 8-0, man. Yeah, she's legit. She's legitimate. She looked good in her last fight uh, against Claudia Gadella um, from memory. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see this. What I like about Carla, okay, is... She's another one of these. Another one of what do they call it? The Cookie Monster. She's yeah, another. Yeah. She's another one of these fighters that isn't isn't necessarily a jiu-jitsu master yet, yeah. but is very very capable rolling around and also very very capable standing up. Yeah, absolutely. She is a massive grinder, um, and you know she's she's got a pedigree for sure. You know she was previously uh, Invicta FC strawweight champion, so she's already been at the top of this this heap. She fought in Bellator too, didn't she? Yeah, she did up until Bellator released all their female fighters. That's a couple of years ago almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the rest of the card, and, the, and I, I'm quite excited because the main the main card of this of, of UFC 105 is actually pretty entertaining. Johnny Hendricks versus Matt Brown. That's going to yeah. be a gr- that's going to be a, a beauty. Stacked, man. Yeah, uh, you know the immortal Matt Brown versus Big Rig Johnny Hendricks. Both of these guys have stoppage abilities. Um, you know Matt Brown hasn't been stopped as yet. He had a good fight against Robbie Lawler, but he he was he was definitely on the losing side of that one. Um, so it's it's a good bounce back match for each of these guys coming off Robbie Lawler. Really, is Hendricks Matt Brown? Uh, so Hendricks Robbie Lawler three going to happen? Uh. Uh. You know, it definitely could. Uh, Hendrix has to win convincingly, and then he'd prob- probably have to win another one to get there. Because Hendrix is a legitimate title contender. Yeah, for sure. Know? And despite the loss to Robbie Lawler, that came just after he um, after he got the decision, the unanimous decision over Robbie Lawler, yep. and then he had the loss to GSP, in which GSP... Um, Retired re- Well, <laughs> semi, I don't know. We, we're not actually too sure what it was. Yeah. But he'd been on a huge streak there. You like, I mean, since the Ultimate Fighter finale, he'd yep. beaten uh, uh, Pierce, he'd beaten Fitch, he'd beaten <laughs> Josh Koscheck, yeah. um, Carlos Hamman. Condit. You yep. know, so he had fought some really top guys besides and Koscheck. Finished the majority of them. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I mean, f- where, do, where does Johnny go from here? Because Johnny, I tell you what, is. For me, I, I picked him after Hendrix. I'm uh, sorry, after GSP retired, I picked Hendrix to be the next champ. To like go on a bit of a story, sort yeah. of run with it. Well, you know that that's right. Um, a lot of people were sort of have been surprised that one one fight champ. Yeah, that's it. You know, got to the top and then just wasn't able to stay there. Um, you know, welterweight of course is incredibly um, competitive, even if you just look at the, the top ten there. But um, yeah, Johnny Hendricks. You know, he he is still ranked number one, but that could all change against Matt Brown. So the the immortal Matt Brown. Who's also come off a loss to to Robbie Lawler? Yep. I mean, who are you picking in this one? Well, I don't know. See, I don't know if Matt Brown can be knocked out. Matt Brown's getting up there now. In age. He, he's getting he's up thirty four. Definitely taken some knocks. He's been through some big battles, and that's what he prefers. So, you know, at any time these fighters could get a button, and Johnny Hendricks could easily walk out there, left hand straight on the chin, and it could be all over in a matter of seconds. If you have a look at if you have a look at Matt Brown's record in the UFC, so he's, um, his career he's nineteen and twelve. Yeah, but okay. his UFC career, but but his UFC but his UFC career is not. That splendid. Now, if you ever look at it, if you if you ever look down through the names, okay, from two thousand and eight through, it, there's no names that ring out there to me that that these are top tier fighters. Yeah, well, that, that's right. Pete Sell was a great great fighter when he fought him, but um, you know the the better fighters that he's fought, he's he's lost those fights. You know, Chris Lytle, um, Seth Bagzinski, etc. Mike Pyle, uh, he's kind of... Uh, no disrespect to Seth Bozinski and, and Chris, L- um, Chris Lytle. They're not top tier. That, you know, no. they're, 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 they're solid mid-card fighters. Yeah, they're you know? like in that tough tier. You know, like all those tough fighters kind of get rolled into one sort of mid-tier sure. sort, of, sort of ranking. Um, and th- those guys are there. You know, he bet Mike Swick, um, you know, Jordan Mean, Mike Pyle, Eric Silver, his last few fights. I definitely think he can beat Johnny. It's just... 
you know, he'd have to finish him really to, to do so because I think Hendricks will have the legs on him. The next fight that I'm really looking forward to is going to be the big heavyweights, Roy Nelson versus Alistair Overeem. Yeah. I, I don't Can Big Country win this? Because they're both coming off losses. So yeah. Alistair Overeem obviously had his loss against Travis Brown, yeah. which was a little bit of a surprise, but he didn't look... He didn't look good. No, no, he he definitely didn't. Um, like the thing with Overeem is that he appears to have lost his chin. You know, once he started stopped taking the horse meat beds, etc. Um, really, his chin has never recovered. And um, I had another picture in my mind when you said horse meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, unlike you know, Roy Nelson is a legitimate knockout artist. He he could potentially knock out anyone in the world. Uh, he is coming off a loss to Mark Hunt, um, where he himself got knocked out. But he could easily he looked underprepared. Yeah, he did. Like man, he looked out of shape. Like but Roy Nelson. <laughs> The, co- the concern for me with Roy, with Roy is he's lost three of his last four. Yeah. So he beat uh, uh, he beat uh, Big Nog. Yeah. He beat Big, Big Nog. Yeah. But lost to to DC. Yeah. Miacic and yep. of course Mark Hunt as well. And right. in that you know, and his last real significant fight since that was was his win over uh, Matt Mitrione. Yeah, that's right. Matt Mitrione is is becoming a contender these days. But you know, he he's he again is another tough tough competitor. Over him hasn't fought since August seventeenth, two thousand and thirteen. So is, yep. is that that's a long time. That's almost it's, it's a year and a half since his last fight in the heavyweight division after both losses versus uh, uh, Bigfoot and, and Travis Brown. I was looking at that. He also hasn't won a fight for three years. Is. Like his last win was against Brock Lesnar. Well, there was a, there was a big gap between the between the um, the silver fight and the Lesnar fight as well. So yeah, now, I, I've always found uh, Roy Nelson. I, I I remember watching on Tough back in the day, and he's always been one of my favorite fighters out of everyone to watch because above everything, he's just entertaining. He's a funny guy. He goes out like he has fun, <laughs> yeah. but he also goes out and knocks people out and like puts them in crucifixes and just smashes the or face. Or gets in. knocked out. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's right. Well, you know, he his his knockout power is undisputable, but you know. After you get knocked out, who kn- who knows what your chin's like? Yeah, so that's right. Reem can definitely bang. He was K1 uh, Grand Prix champion. He fought in Pride, etc. He's a legitimate kickboxer, but it, I guess it's a battle of chin. And some people would possibly see this as like a fight for your contract kind of um, kind of deal as well for these guys. Strike Force heavyweight champion, K1 World Grand Prix champion, Dream heavyweight champion, UFC. He's he's done it all. Yep, that's right. He's definitely got the credentials. It's just. His chin might not match his credentials. And does does he have the will to do it anymore? Is the other thing too? Because that was after after the, after he got caught for the um, he tested positive for the testes. Yeah. He, he um, that he didn't seem like the same fighter in 2013. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, uh, I'm sure it's a huge deal to to come off the testosterone, especially when after the Lesnar fight he tested positive for 13 times the the was average crazy. amount of testosterone for for a human of his age and sex so you know he wasn't just he wasn't just using testosterone he was like going for it at uh, the two flyweight fights uh, fighters which I'm not very familiar with uh, at all Chris Carriasso versus uh, Henry Cejudo hey, how does that Cejudo Cejudo yeah that's right uh, Henry Cejudo is an Olympic freestyle gold medalist so that guy has he's got wrestling on locks and um, Chris Carriasso was a kickboxer he fought TJ Dillashaw uh, in Dillashaw's second defense at UFC 178 and um, he took Dillashaw to the fourth round didn't really look like winning but you know he sort of he certainly um, tested TJ Dillashaw um, with this one the majority of people are picking Cejudo he has had some issues cutting down to um, to the to the weight division but he uh, he tweeted the other day that he is like eight pounds over so he's definitely going to make it this time he um, he's on a seven and zero tier as well. Yeah, that's right, man. He is he is he's like one of these guys that is being considered the future of the division. Pick them quickly down there if you can, Ultimate Rider. Um, yeah, so uh, in the prelims, uh, let, well, let's start from the, the bottom of the prelims. Jared Rocholt versus Josh Copeland. I like Rocholt. He um, he bet Soa the Hulk Palele. Uh, shout out to Soa. Um, in New Zealand uh, at UFC Auckland. Ground him out. Um, I, I'd see him taking this one. Um, Darren Crookshank, awesome uh, Taekwondo guy. I'd, I'd certainly, I, I always put my hat in Darren Crookshank's corner, again, even against someone like Benil Dariush. Um, Elias uh, Theodorou, who is a um, Canadian fighter, uh, considered the best Canadian fighter that wasn't signed to the UFC before he went on Tough Nations. Certainly see him taking it over Navarez. And Ross Pearson versus Sam Stout, the uh, prelims main card, that's going to be one to watch. You know, uh, for me, I love Ross Pearson. Uh, I I got to go with Ross. That's the breakdown of UFC 185. Thanks to the Ultimate Rider. Catch him where? 
Sure. Uh, I'm on <laughs> Twitter. Sorry. Uh, catch me on Twitter uh, at the ultimate writer. Um, also, theultimatewriter.co.nz, Facebook, everywhere. So, a lot of other UFC talk of this week, in particular the picture that came out um, of CM Punk in training. Yeah, that's right. You know, he um, obviously he signed, well, signed, he, he has um, gone to train with Duke Rufus at Rufus Sport, Anthony Pettis, etc. Some legitimate killers over there and a really, really high level striking um, camp. You know, Duke Rufus himself and his brother, Taekwondo fighters, as well as uh, they transitioned to Muay Thai after a famous fight in Thailand. Um, but yeah, uh, he looks good. Um, um, well, in the photo he looked conditioned and the photo is sort of midway through his first ever live sparring session where he's taking on a uh, fighter who is ranked 3-0, and a pro fighter so it's kind of the competition that the UFC are looking to match him up against How do you think he'd go against a calibre fighter of that sort of level? Well, um, you know, it, it does depend on the matchup, you know, if it, the thing is we don't know what what um, CM Punk Phil Brooks' strengths are going to be you know his, his Jiu Jitsu is what he's been training the longest but whether that t- ends up being his actual strength or whether you know he might have a killer right hand that no one knows about because you've never had the ability to see it so you know he, he could be amazing um, Duke Rufus himself came out and said uh, he's proud of CM Punk did his first live MMA sparring today he said you can teach skill but you can't teach will um, and he's getting better every day he's very dedicated and, and thanks to the whole team for their support like you said before though that's that's a statement that sounds like a guy who's yeah yeah that, that's you know what else is he going to say he's not going to be like well you know the guy's old he's crap i don't think he's going to make it he's, he's never going to say that so you know this is this is definitely a supportive statement um and yeah it, it is what it is you know we won't know until he's in there there was also a quote that came out of it which said um cm punk would have lost the scrimmage if we had scored it Oh, so wow. that, that's something interesting to take from it as well. But he said, you know, he's going up against a guy that's like a professional guy, and, yeah, and Punk no was okay with fighter. the fact that he would have lost it. He said, you know, yeah, he enjoys the struggle. So. You know, what what could you, you you can't expect to? I don't know if you can expect anything else. You know, I'm I'm sure he's putting in the hard work, and it's going to be amazing to see. Uh, I've sort of come around to the idea of him being there. You know, initially I was definitely against it. Now I I'm just interested to see it. Um, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to find the photo here online. I think I've I think I've picked up the right one now. Oh. He looks good. There, he looks it looks in good shape. Yeah, he does. He looks in good shape. You know, they're like full full contact sparring, no head no headgear. You know, he's he's obviously doing the work. So he's got um, a lot of hunger in the eyes too. There. Yeah, he he looks great. Like um, I I just want to see some footage. I'd love to see him just on the heavy bag for a minute. I just love to see that because that can show you so much. Yeah. So throughout the week we had of course the, another Duco event. It was the the road to the title as they like to call the it. Burger King quote. road to the title. I, I tell you what I thought was funny though was when they did the promo spot with all the fighters in the Burger King uniforms. <laughs> 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 How demeaning could that be? <laughs> like even even getting Butterbean to walk out in the, in, in the in the um in the Burger King uniform, I was like, what the fuck are these guys thinking? How much money did Burger King really put into this? Yeah, that's right. I, you know, they theoretically they've got them by the balls if they're they're able to get their fighters to do so, ultra gimmicky stuff like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so of course, the big talking point coming out of it is um we'll, actually we'll cover our first uh, Butterbean, Butterbean TKO of the Fina Marker in the first round. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, Fina Marker is definitely not a boxer, and Butterbean trains boxing full time, and that that's exactly what we saw. For me, we saw you know uh, Fina Marker didn't look great, got knocked down a couple of times, and. But have been really just dominated the whole match. It was pretty messy to to watch. So it was like absolutely. It, it was there the was like Butterbean's obviously got pretty pretty incredible pow- power behind him. He's a big yeah. guy. Um, yeah, it was it was pretty messy Thick fight as well. I think. Yeah. The thing for me with this fight here is that it was a bit messy, but you got a guy. It's a complete mismatch. There, there, yeah. there would have been much better picking a guy like Jeremiah Fatialofa or someone like yeah. that who has a bit more of a combat sport background yeah. and things. It's Peter Fatialofa's son, yeah? Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. He's the, he's the son of Peter Fats. Yeah. Um, and Finau Maka, despite him being a, a top football player and being in pretty good shape for his age, yeah. at the end of the day, he's not, a, he's, he's not fighting. He's not boxing every single day. Yeah, he's not an athlete, which, no. you know, Butterbean is becoming an athlete. You know, the guy's putting in the well, work. Well, is an athlete. He's just not yeah. a boxer. True, true. You know? and, that's, yeah. and that's the difference between the two, is that, yeah. is that Butterbean's been, what, boxing competitively now. We'll call it, they, they call it competitive, and they call it professional fighting, despite it being under corporate, corporate yeah, rules. Yeah, that's right. But he's been fighting pretty consistently now for the last couple of years. Yep. 
Phenal Marcus first fight, he looked good. He looked good in the ring attire. And yeah, he had David he Tua behind him. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, he looked great. <laughs> shout out to my man, uh, Takao Cocker, who was uh, in the corner there of, um, of Butterbean. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, may- maybe he was the reason. Maybe well, he gave, hey. I'm sorry, not Butterbean, of uh, Phenal Marcus. Maybe he gave Phenal Marcus <laughs> some, uh, some bad advice. But um, yeah, I, 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 it's just a mismatch, you know. And I think the, the guy, I think if they want to start taking him seriously, they need to be start matching him up with. Um, Threat. Top, top five. And despite him, like, like he's a he's a he's a very very nice guy. Yes, he's yep. a great guy. Yep. he's got a great personality. He's got a great promotional personality for, for the, sure. For the, he, and he's got he understands what he's saying. Yeah, what that, he's doing. that's right. But very honest about it too. Yeah, yeah. But they got to start putting him up against some some guys with some reasonable background, yeah, just so right. it doesn't start to become a joke. Yeah, because you know it's already um, approaching that. And I I was um, reading a few forums online, etc. And you know a lot of people were sort of sort of being quite down about it. Um, you know, the consensus really was put him in some in there with someone that that can actually fight back. Someone that's uh, doing it full time, eh? Yeah, that's right. You know, even if they're not a pro, someone that's like yeah, well, training all the time. You know, at, at least someone who is a corporate boxer, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, someone even you know, Etty Etty is a corporate boxer. He's had a couple of fights, you know. Etty would be a much greater challenge than um Finau Marker. Yeah. The main event for the night, of course, the big one was Joseph Parker on his road to the title, as they keep putting it. The acid test. Yeah, man, up against Jason Petaway. Um, yeah, I mean, I've watched some YouTube stuff of Petaway, and Petaway didn't. He, he just. He just didn't seem. He, he's got a weird. He's got a weird stance, uh, which yeah. I don't quite like. But he struggled to get inside um, Joseph Parker, and Joseph Parker was definitely, even though he's looking a lot bigger. Nate, you pointed out he's looking a lot quicker than what he has he in was. recent times. I was really impressed by it because I've watched a little bit of Parker before, and. He, he's never really blown me away. I've always thought he's like incredible looking athlete, but never really shown much um, kind of no, nothing that's really impressed me. But his speed yesterday was like, oh, not yesterday, so the other day was yeah, like, day, his, yeah. his left jab was quick. Yeah, he And on great. point. It was because you've, Dan's mentioned that his, his jab is, is excellent, and I, I absolutely agree. You know, he looked he looked like a great fighter out there, certainly overwhelmed and outclassed um, Petaway in this instance. Um, yeah, it was a great fight for Joseph Parker. For yeah. me, it was the hunger that Joseph Parker displayed. That yeah. was a big thing. Definitely. And, I've, and I've, been, I've been a little bit of a detractor. I'm saying, well, I don't know whether or not he's up to the level of taking yeah. on guys like Deontay Wilder for the WBC title. Oh, is, sure. he even, is he even at the level to, to be able to fight um, uh, any one of the big Russians that are out there, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, and so I'm, <laughs> I've doubted him. Yeah, I haven't. Se- I hadn't seen it, I, and I said leading into this fight. I think I said it last week on the podcast as well. Yeah, I said he needs to start finishing guys. That's right. He needs to start finishing them early and looking good. And I, you know, he did exactly that on he Thursday exactly night. Exactly. He looked that. really good. Yep. He was very, very quick. He was big. He showed hunger. Yep. You're right. I've always said he's had an excellent jab. But yep. what I did like was what it was his power to the body, and that's yes. what impressed me so much on the yep. other night. And he was putting because at the end of the day, you can jab, 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 but that's point boxing. Yeah. If yes. you want to create. When, if you want to make your if you want to make your jabs really count in a physical manner, yep. you need to attack the body so it weakens their core area, That's and right. through that it opens up an opportunity to weaken their will. Just everything you know, like yeah. um, you know, the solid body shots can turn a man into a coward in seconds. And, and that's exactly what happened to Pitaway. Before Pitaway got right. knocked out, he looked like he was he was starting to cower a little bit that's because right. those body punches were starting to hurt. Yeah, Parker. Yeah. Once he kind of got that first hit in, um, you sensed that he was tasting blood, and he kind of actually went after For it, sure. which was which was which was nice to see that he he went out and started swinging. Chase the finish rather yeah. than just you know yeah, rather than just going through, through the motions. motions again. Yeah. Yep. he went yeah. out and he was attacking the body, yep. trying to get a knockdown finish, and he, and he and did. Some of those yeah. shots looked vicious. Yeah, some oh. of the body shots especially. He was yeah. definitely a level up from where he needs to be. I still think he's a couple of levels away from being at that level to take yeah. on Walter. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, but but like potential, absolutely, and um, food for thought. Like you know, if, do you think he needs to move overseas? Well, he's already he's already based uh, he's, already, he's already based. Through, yeah. I think a lot of his American fighting lead up in Las yeah. Vegas. So he is basically Kevin Barry lives in Las Vegas. Yeah, um, he stays at Kevin, Kevin Barry's compound. Nice. Um, yeah, must be. <laughs> yeah, not going to talk about where the money probably come from. Um, <laughs> Mr. Tua. But yeah, what? No, who? No, never mind. <laughs> and so. Yeah, I, I think he's already there. I think they just got to keep persevering. I think he's got to keep fighting, slowly getting better and better competition. I think, and they're talking that there was a talk that he's going to be um, uh, windowed up against. Uh, I've, I've I've gone absolutely blank right now. What was that? What's the other big Russian who sparred with the Klitschkos and? Oh, I've gone absolutely blank. Anyway, th- there's talk about him going up against um, um, him next. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. What, I mean, what do you think? To uh, not to what do you think um, Parker needs to do to 
before he gets to that next level. Yeah, you know, he's got to expose himself on the international stage more. You know, it's it, it's certainly an achievement um, dominating the New Zealand scene, clearing out the division over here. But um, until Alexander you, Ustinov, sorry. Ah, uh, yes, yep. But, but un, until you are, you know, fa- facing the top uh, competitors, people like Ustinov, etc., and people that are at the top of the game internationally. It, it really has no international uh, Yeah, I can't imagine he's that well known outside of here no, in Australia. No, of course. Alexander yeah. Ustinov is, is, is a good challenge for a guy like him. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be a great matchup. Like Stepping Stone, you, you think that would that would be good? I think if he can if he can beat Ustinov and even uh, finish Ustinov, yeah. and I don't think he will. Ustinov's a tough character. I yeah. mean, you saw how hard it was for Tua to get inside there. Yeah. The difference is Parker's, what, 6667? Six, 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 yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little bit more of an even fight yeah, up against day. the big seven-footer. And Young... Quick as Young, hell, quick, yeah. fast, powerful. Yeah, I think if he can, if he can beat him, no matter which, no matter which way he does it. Yeah, I think that's, th- I think that's the true test, and that's and true stepping stone to the title and yeah. that international exposure. Do you think Parker kind of needs to get a punch? Like he needs to get like, like a finishing, a, a finishing punch. punch, like a go-to thing. Like Tua always, always had that look, had that left hook. Uh, I don't know that he same. doesn't have a finishing punch. No, I, 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 I think I think you saw enough from that overhand right. Even yeah. when, yeah. even when, even when um, <laughs> um, Petaway was on his knee at the end of that round, yeah, yeah. Um, that underhand right. That, that's, that's, <laughs> that's still, that's still, that's his finisher, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and fighting now has evolved from Tyson and Tua, yes. one punch finishes and that's things right. like that. It's evolved a little bit more yeah, now. It's more it's strategy, a building a victory, and and that's been created by the the lighter weight fighters, yeah. the 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 Mayweathers, the Pacquiao, well, even people you know, like um, Oscar De La Hoya and these guys. Well, who, who, what's his name that um, Tua fought for the title? Uh, Lennox Lewis. Lewis yeah you know yeah. Lennox Lewis you know he, he was uh, essentially a technical fighter um, you know he kept David Tour outside all night um, and you know that, that whole technical uh, movement has, has certainly been growing for me I'm looking forward to seeing what I'm now looking forward to seeing what's next up in the Joseph Parker yeah. um, it's got to be a contender like someone who, who is a legitimate threat to him not someone who is painted as that and possibly isn't that's right, and of course, for me, one of the other news title or not one of the other news stories coming out, of course, was the the Duco PR stuff up. I think with Tana yeah, Porter, yeah, definitely, definitely uh, bad taste from Duco. I think. Yeah, but um, do you expect anything less from from Higgins and um, <laughs> and uh, and um, Stanaway? No, no, no. It, uh, so, oh. I'm I'm just I'm just not with it today. The the rugby uh, Dean Lonigan. Oh right. You know, so course. I mean, it, you know, it is all sensationalism, um, spectacle. But you know, they knew what they were doing. They knew yeah. they'd have to retract it later it's on. Like, dude, Tana Porter, that guy. You know, heart goes out to him. Amazing that um, his his previous conviction has been quashed now, and he's he's going to be released. Hopefully, he's going to be um, given the compensation that he deserves. But um, he shouldn't be getting used in this sort of way in any type of marketing or advertising. Bad taste. One hundred percent. Bad taste altogether. Anything else you want to talk about in regards to email? Hey, hey, oh Bert. What about old Bert? Bert oh. yeah, Bert Watson. Um, you know, the That's baby a sad one. Stars. It is a sad one. You know, he's been with the UFC. For people who don't know, Bert Watson basically is the glue that keeps UFC live events and even fight week going. Um, he basically he runs everything that Dana can't during fight week. So, you know, everything from managing fighter weights to getting people at the curtain at the right time, everything happens because Burt Watson is there to make He's it He's UFC's happen. gorilla monsoon. Yeah, exactly. You know, he is the guy. And, um, you know, uh, the, earlier this week, um, basically straight after the pay-per-view last week, 184, it came out that he'd had an altercation. Early rumours were that it was a member of Rousey's entourage, but Dana White, as well as Burt himself, have come out and squashed that rumour. Uh, Burt has acknowledged that something was said to him, and he, in his own words, he just couldn't let it slide. Um, and when he was asked on MMAfighting.com radio, um, shout out to those guys as well, uh, whether he uh, shout out to Dana White <laughs> when he was um, whether he regretted it he said at his age you can't regret anything so you know it's sad one definitely a lot of fighters have come out on social media and sort of there's been a big outpouring of emotion etc and uh, a lot of people saying great things about Bert well I mean what do you think it said to him do you think it was a racial slur of some sort I mean I, I don't know like man uh, who knows what it could have been, but um, I don't know, for, for someone like Bert to take offence to it, uh, it must have been something tangible, you know, something offensive, so. Yeah. Uh, I thought, it, I was, <laughs> you look like you had something Everyone to say. looked at me and I was like, I have nothing to say on this. <laughs> well, 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 what I could say is um, sometimes, like, with, you know, things blowing up and people were saying something offended them, it can always be like a, a build-up. 
You know, it doesn't have to be one thing that someone's said. Sure, it could be sure. like, you know, like Dana could have said something. Like the straw that broke the camel's yeah, back. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that kind of thing where, you know, maybe it's just been years of something and yep. he just finally gave up and, and had enough but of it. Also, you know, Bert, Bert Watson is old. Like, you know, the dude's been around for a long time. He is old. Um, and, you know, surely... <laughs> he's like, been around on this earth for too long. <laughs> surely he's made his money, you know. Yeah. Does he need that kind of stress, you know, thinking about health, etc. Yeah. Also, quick shout out to Bryce Ratani Co. who, um, speaking of uh, American-based fighters, he had an MMA fight in the weekend, won by stoppage in the first round, looked great. Nice. All right, cool. Hey, the road to WrestleMania is in full swing at the moment, and yep. Lesnar, what yeah, do you reckon is yep. going to happen there? There's a lot of talk that Lesnar's probably going to walk out of the WWE straight after his main event fight. Well, that's right, you know, um, so he was spotted at UFC 184 having a chat with Dana White, and... He um, was, was on, they put the screen on, and he put, put him on the big screen too. Yeah, that's right, so, um, you know, definitely, definitely the UFC are, are using that marketing angle, um, whether it's... You know, just just a thing, or whether it's going to be for real. Um, you never know when, when you're talking about professional wrestling and the UFC. You never know what actually is going to happen. He looked happy to be there. Yeah, definitely. He looked dapper as hell in that suit, man. He looked great, and um, yeah, he looked huge. He is a humongous human being. And he was having fun with the camera, like yeah. show boxing and stuff. So yeah, cool. that's right. Alrighty then. We well, are listening to Sport and Brawl. We're going to take a quick little break. We'll be back in just a little bit. Stay right there. All right, Sport and Ball, welcome back here on your Sunday afternoon. We're doing a little bit of podcasting, talking right here, and it's and all about UFC, all about MMA, all about combat sport. During the week, Ronda Rousey calling out a certain Brazilian fighter. Uh, great who, sorry, who, sorry, I didn't have your mic on. <laughs> Her name is Betch Cahaya, um, great fighter. Uh, she she has um, called out the Four Horsewomen, which is what Ronda Rousey's um, clique of fighters is called. And um, yeah, she doesn't have the same ring. The Four Horsewomen. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, they they do the same hand hand gestures, etc. You know, shout so out. The yeah, yeah. Four fingers up. <laughs> yeah, and um, that's yeah. just how many can be taken. So <laughs> that was really bad. Bitch I love you, Ronda. Um, I take it back. She's going to be fighting Rousey at at in, sorry in Brazil, so at home for Bitch Cahaya. Um, yeah, it's man. I, I don't know. I don't know about this matchup for Bitch. It's it's not looking great. No, it's not. I think, and I, I yeah. think um, Ronda wants to embarrass her. Yeah, yeah, for sure. She wants to just destroy her in her hometown and her home country in front of her own people. Yeah, well, that's right. That's definitely the way it's looking. Um, you know, Bitch Cahaya is not a noted knockout striker, not a noted grappler. She is well rounded, but um, well. Rounder doesn't cut it against Rousey, and of course Cyborg calling out Ronda Rousey this week. She's going to be actually. She's got an interview tonight. It's going to be on. Um, I think it's MMA TV, yep. um, where she's interviewed and she talks a little bit about it. She doesn't hate Ronda, but she 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 certainly doesn't respect kind her. Of, yeah, kind of is what it is with those guys. You know, they are easily number one and number two in the world of of women's MMA in any division. Those two, and um, you know, they fought in the same division before. Cyborg was one forty five champion in strike force. Rousey dropped down to one thirty five. Um, uh, to go after Misha, ended up winning that title, um, and then you know that that was uh, essentially the last time the opportunity for them to fight really existed. Does Ronda go up and wait, or does, does um, Cyborg come down? I don't really think the fight could happen um, in, if Cyborg goes down, unless she spends like a year off the weights, yeah. or you know, she she if you see her on weigh-in day, she has nothing to lose. No, no, that's um, what I thought as well. I was looking at her. I was like, she's not like if she loses ten pounds, that's changing her body a lot. If Ronda right. puts on ten, she's not like. Yeah, you know, like Ronda Rousey, you know, I, I reckon Ronda Rousey could fight it, you know, almost, almost uh, welterweight, you know, she, I, I think she, she is e- an excellent fighter, and, you know, she, she tells everyone she's the best, everyone thinks she's the best, you know, she doesn't owe it to anyone to make this fight happen at a higher weight division, but there's no reason for it not to, if, if you actually, if she can, yeah, yeah if, you know, if you 150% knew you were the best in the world, Theoretically, you would take you would chase fights. Yeah, you know? it's, at the end of the day, Manny Pacquiao chased fights, etc. Yeah. You know, um, other fighters in the UFC, Anderson Silva, etc. They've fought out of their division, um, and you know they've won as well. So, and if you're not like putting yourself at risk by massively changing your weight class, and you yep. think you're going to be overpowered, then and it's not if a she huge goes deal. up in weight, there's no title. You know, yeah. there's no title if they fight at a catch weight because yeah. R- um, Rousey is 135 UFC champ, and Cyborg is 145 and Victor UFC champ. Yeah. So what? So what does Ronda do? I mean, yeah, she's, where does she's, she go she, now? Like, where, where does she go now? Because there's no one really that can touch her in the division. It's like a Mayweather versus Pacquiao scenario. You know, these two are so so far above everyone else that you know people won't be happy until the fight happens. But 
the thing is Rousey and the UFC, uh, well, really the UFC, are in control of it because, you know, if they wanted Cyborg in the UFC, they could give her a contract tomorrow. But yeah. they, are, they are not giving her a contract for whatever reason. They're not going to build a division around her the same as they did with Rousey at this stage. They should do Rousey versus, like, a flyweight guy. Well, that's, that's something that's been talked about, you know, people talking about Ronda Rousey being able to beat half the men in the bantamweight division, mm. like, the, you know, 135 yeah, men's division. There's plenty of it. Cool. There's, there's yeah, it's a, it doesn't sit right with me. I, you, know, you know, Ronda Rousey is top 0.5% of, of women in the world, but could she beat a man who is top 0.5% of men in the world? It's, it's, a different, it's a different scale. Have you seen the videos of her on The Ultimate Fighter throwing around Uriah Hall recently? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, like her, who's, like, probably got... 30 40 pounds on her yeah like that's the these are wrestling drills this is training etc like i've seen her um seen footage of her grappling with nick diaz diaz looks like he's going maybe 40 percent. why can't i grapple with her well you know maybe you could for 14 seconds get yourself I'd roll there. around go to glendale bro i wouldn't last 14 seconds either <laughs> there it is. Yeah. very nice very nice we're talking about like kimura and shit or armbar yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> submit- the submit- penis submit- submit- kimura defense. You're not that submissive? No, no. I'm, <laughs> well, I don't know. I think it's what I need in my life. <laughs> a dominant woman. I think I need a dominant woman in my life. I've got to be perfectly honest there. They can yeah, throw yeah. you around. They can throw me around and... <laughs> break, you know, break your arm. <laughs> break my arm. Break my will to live. I oh, know that's what women do in general. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sport and Ball, any closing things you want to talk about before we kick it off for another week? No, nah, no. Nah, just um, shout out to the Breakers who are currently playing. We're watching live down here at the Tap Room. Uh, looks like they... they Looks like uh, you shout out to well, everybody. Yeah, man. Everyone I, gets a shout out. Yeah, well, you know, I I, I like to share the love. Uh, hey, I appreciate it, Nate. Anything you want to cover off before we say goodbye? Ah, uh, no, not really. I, I, I wish the best. Thanks for that, there, Nate. There for the uh, breakers <laughs> and their wonderful to watch basketball. Excellent. High level. High level. JB, tell us where we can find you one more time. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Basically, if you just Google the Ultimate Writer. You, you will find me there. Ultimate. With a T. Yeah, yeah basically I'm the first page of Google. <laughs> Ultimate with an U-L, not an O-L. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, we'll catch you up next week. Red Scarf, look forward to having you back. Yeah, yeah. Miss you. My man. Oh, yeah, you miss him. It's a bit gay. Also, um, just quickly mention, Izzy Israel Adesanya is fighting next week in the King in the Ring. Uh, looking oh, yeah. to reclaim his, his uh, King of the Ring title. And, uh, yeah, it should be a great one to watch. Izzy, you're the man. Good luck, brother. Cheer, sure, brother. Everyone else, take care. Have a good week, everyone. Keep safe. Be good. And remember, if they're not bad, be good. And if you're not good, be really, really bad. Just like Nate. <laughs> it's, J. Cole, it's J. Cole right here on SFN.